This is Barbara Johns. I'm an art historian, author, and former museum curator. My work for the past 15 years is focused on Issei, or immigrant generation Japanese American artists. This is one of three accounts of Seattle Issei artists who were well known before the war. All were incarcerated at Minidoka and left records of their experience. Kamakichi Tokita, whose painting is at left, Takuichi Fuji, the center, and Kenjiro Nomura at the right. Their artwork and words give unique insight into their experience, especially an Issei perspective. This week, I'd like to introduce you to Kamakichi Tokita. This engaging self-portrait shows Tokita in the peak years of recognition. He first gained attention as an artist in the 1920s, and by 1930 was called the leader of the Japanese artists in Seattle. His major legacy from the war years is not painting but a diary which begins on December 7th, 1941. Rather than my reading from the diary, you can hear his words in a video that follows this introduction. Tokita was born in Shizuoka, Japan in 1897. His father was a businessman, a tea merchant and a soy sauce manufacturer who expected his sons to follow him. Tokita, shown here in his student uniform, graduated with a business degree. However, he was increasingly drawn to art and, defying his father, studied Chinese landscape painting. He became an excellent calligrapher. This example is from some years later. When he finally persuaded his father to allow him to go to the United States, he reached Seattle and stayed. It was 1919, only a few years before an act of Congress would bar further immigration from Asia. Seattle's Nihon Machi was centered around Fifth and Main Streets, just south of the landmark Smith Tower, which was completed only a few years before Tokita's arrival. He quickly became part of a vibrant community of young artists. They were painters, photographers, and poets. He's pictured here in the lower left, Kenjiro Nomura, it stands at the back, the second from the right. He became a sign painter. He joined Nomura in a sign painting business located in the center of Nihonmachi. The shop was their place of business, their studio, their home until each married, and a gathering place for Nikkei artists. In the photo on the right, we can see Tokita's pleasure in their company. Sunday was their day off from work and the day for field trips. He painted urban landscapes, the working waterfront, and the nearby river valleys, but the city paintings are his most distinctive. They picture the shops, houses, and streets in and around Nihonmachi in subdued earthy colors, keen attention to the details of place, and a palpable sense of familiarity. His paintings feature the signs, billboards, and infrastructure of the modern city, as this one, a street corner near the sign shop. He enjoyed photography, and his painting compositions often show the cropped view or tilted perspective like that framed by a camera. The viewpoint is that of an insider, one who belongs. Unquestionably, the artist is at home in the community. Tokita's paintings like these were featured in two solo exhibitions at the Seattle Art Museum, toured the West Coast, and were selected to represent Washington State nationally. His creative energies were expressed in additional ways. Since youth, he had practiced Kyudo. He held patents for two inventions. On occasion, he was called upon to illustrate or advise on Japanese art. His knowledge of Japanese and European literature becomes apparent in the diary. He married and began a family. When the Depression forced the closure of the sign shop, he bought the management business of the Cadillac Hotel at the edge of Neonmachi. Here, the young family lived and grew. With Japan's attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, Tokita began a diary which would eventually total three volumes. He describes his emotional state, his concern for his family, the regulations that change daily, and the government's steps toward exclusion. 
He reads English language and Japanese language newspapers and tries to reconcile the conflicting accounts of the war. Two-thirds of the diary tells of the five months from December 7th until the 1st of May, when the family was ordered from their home in the hotel to the Puyallup Temporary Detention Site south of Seattle, and from there to Minidoka. The diary is a strong and revealing Issei voice, and rare among first-person documents, for its focus on this uncertain period. Tokita wrote nothing during the tumultuous months at Puyallup and resumed the diary only when the family was safely settled at Minidoka. He describes the process of settling and caring for his family, the interpersonal dynamics of the camp's operations, and closely follows news of the war. He and his wife, Haruko, are pictured here sometime after the arrival with four of their children, including a baby boy born at Piala. He left only a few paintings of Minidoka, which reflect the new desert environment, not only in their subject, but in their light-filled painterly touch. Here are two of his family barracks, pictured with the intimate perspective he had brought to earlier paintings. And this of the boiler room in the laundry and sanitation building, the place where Issei men gathered to talk, and a view that probably only an Issei would paint. He made several paintings of the legendary Buddhist monk Daruma and inscribed them Minidoka Mountain Man, connoting the perseverance required by life in incarceration. In time, he joined his friend and former business partner, Kenjiro Nomura, as one of the camp sign painters. He and Nomura designed and painted the honor roll with the names of the Nisei from Menadoka who volunteered to serve in the army and those who were later drafted. As the army began recruiting volunteers in early 1943, Tokita notes in his diary that he is grateful the Nisei are given the chance to demonstrate their loyalty. The sign stood at the main entrance to Minidoka, where a replica stands today, with an American eagle spreading its wings across the top. At its base, the Nikkei built a Japanese-style ceremonial garden composed of plants and rocks from the American desert, and designed by another Seattle Issei, Fujitaro Kubota, a renowned nurseryman and the head gardener at Minidoka. The sign stands as a statement of Japanese-American identity and loyalty, despite confinement. Tokita and his family remained at Minidoka until the camp's closing in the fall of 1945. They returned to Seattle and moved initially into the Japanese language school. Tokita died only three years later, just as he and Haruko were reestablishing a home and business. It has been my great pleasure to get to know the Tokita family, beginning when I was writing a book about the artist. Shokichi Tokita, the eldest son, proposed the book when the diary was translated and has helped in the numerous projects that have stemmed from its publication in 2011. The book reproduces three quarters of the diary. You can hear Tokita's words in this video that was filmed during an exhibition at the Seattle Art Museum at the time produced by the Seattle Channel and is showing now as part of virtual pilgrimage. I invite you to listen. Thank you. <laughs>